The reason why they are popular is because they've seen what happened to uh, MicroStrategy, yeah. whose market cap was $1 billion. Over the, the following five years, it has become a $100 billion company. Uh, and the reason why they were able to do it is because I think it's two things. One is um, the market gradually recognizing Bitcoin mm -hmm. as the monetary asset that can be taken as a store of value. And therefore, uh, any company that can accumulate Bitcoin uh, on a per share basis uh, and grow the balance mm -hmm. uh, actually should be viewed as uh, something similar to maybe a company in emerging market that has an exports and therefore growing U.S. dollar reserves. Because I remember in a lot of emerging markets, they are operating in a high inflation environment and their own currency is losing value quickly. Uh, but if you are a company that's exporting in the international markets and, and earning U.S. dollar earnings stream, then you have to value that in a different way. Maybe perhaps even applying a multiples, because if, especially if that U.S. dollar earnings is growing. I think something similar is happening with the way that the market is viewing companies like MicroStrategy, and that's why they were successful, and they are, that's why there are so many copycats out there. Right. Lynn, come in on this. Hey, Peter. One of those copycats, as we were just talking about, is Japan's MetaPlanet, of course, right? Um, I wanted to ask you about the comparison there with MetaPlanet versus strategy. I know you've done some research there. Because the way I see it is that the fundamental risk is the same but of course Japan has a regulatory environment that makes it easier right for them to be able to finance uh, for the Bitcoin can you just explain that to us and unpack the risks sure yeah um, so every jurisdiction has uh, their own unique set of uh, stock market rules and regulations in the case of Japan What's working in favor of those, uh, you know, companies like MetaPlanet is the fact that uh, the filing process for new security issuance is a lot simpler. Um, so they can very quickly issue stocks or bonds in the market, raise money, and purchase Bitcoin. Uh, and, and they can accumulate uh, very quickly, more faster than their counterparts in the U.S. Uh, so that's one thing that's working in favor of uh, MetaPlanet. Another is... Um, you know, the retail demand. So Japan has um, this tax-exempt investment program for individual investors known as NISA. Uh, and uh, so if you buy a MetaPlanet stock using that program, uh, your gains uh, are tax-free. Mm -hmm. Now, if you buy the underlying, the Bitcoin, uh, you know, the, the tax rate for your gains is something like a 50, it, can be, it could be as high as 55% according to Japanese uh, tax code at the moment. So uh, I mean, it's no-brainer. Uh, it's much better. It's much smarter way to get an exposure to Bitcoin through uh, MetaPlanet stock in NISA uh, rather than buying the underlying uh, the, the Bitcoin. So that's I think another work, another factor that's working in favor of a uh, MetaPlanet uh, in Japan versus uh, their counterparts in the U.S. But does Peter does it carry more risk in in that way because it's more retail driven because it's faster as well? Um, well, not necessarily. I mean, what, what we are seeing with the MetaPlanet specifically is that uh, maybe, maybe retail uh, demand has kick-started the process, but because the share price is performing, uh, and they also increasingly agree with the thesis that the MetaPlanet management is running with, you're also seeing the uh, institutional investors taking big position in this name. I think uh, in the capital group, it being uh, one example, I think they reported their holdings as, as one of the major shareholders. So, uh, it's, uh, it's a positive feedback loop uh, that maybe perhaps started with the retail investors, but it's also having a, uh, you know, the, uh, the positive feedback into the uh, institutional side of the demand as well. And Peter, we have seen though with uh, MetaPlanet stock that it's fallen some 50% since June. And we've seen as well that uh, recently it's been trying to, I guess, shift gears, a massive overseas share sale, uh, rolling out preferred shares. It seems like a bit of a defensive move. Doesn't this underscore some of the risks here with companies like uh, these Bitcoin treasury firms? Yeah, so um, maybe... <clears throat> The, uh, the, the big offering they announced, uh, I think it was last week or two weeks ago, uh, 130 billion yen's worth of uh, international stock offering. That's the biggest raise uh, so far. And also it's the first time they are raising money through 
uh, international share offering rather than uh, the selling of uh, uh, acquisition rights like warrants and convertible bonds. Uh, and I think, uh, I mean, it, it showcases that there, the demand for uh, Meta Planet is not just confined to the domestic market, uh, but also uh, it's a global phenomenon. And uh, um, also, I, I think uh, uh, what, it, what it shows is that, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the, 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 there's a lot of actually angles in a lot of toolkits that, that these companies can utilize. Uh, you know, you mentioned the preferred share issuance, and that's exactly what MicroStrategy has done as well. Mm. And the reason why the preferred share becomes interesting is because you can structure in such a way that uh, it can be targeted for the fixed income market. Uh, because when you think about it, depending on how you structure the preferred shares, it's sort of like a perpetually rollable uh, bond. Mm -hmm. Because uh, preferred shares don't usually don't, uh, it doesn't have to get redeemed, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it can be redeemed, but yeah. you can also structure in such a way that it doesn't have to get redeemed. Mm -hmm. in, in which case, then, uh, it removes that uh, redemption liability from a corporate perspective, which is a very kind of attractive proposition if you are a company that's running a treasury operation, crypto mm -hmm. treasury operation. When you invest in these uh, treasury companies, crypto treasury companies, what is a red flag then? Because I think people get scared um, if you're not in the industry. When you hear crypto and structure, I don't know, it just sounds risky, right? Yeah. So what is something that people really need to avoid? Something exotic. <laughs> may not really fly very well in yeah, crypto. That's right, yeah, yeah, these two words are bad <laughs> words, right? So I, I think two things from my perspective. I think in order for these operations to succeed, and not everybody's gonna succeed, by right. the way, there's this long tail of you know, the, these uh, crypto, uh, crypto treasury operations, and you, you're gonna have your share of uh, inexperienced players in the market. Mm -hmm. So I think the two key things that you need to look, watch out for is, first one is the underlying asset has to be an asset that has a potential to become a monetary uh, asset, okay. the potential to achieve that status. Mm. Now, obviously, Bitcoin is there. I don't think anyone has a lot of, maybe still do, but like, you know, most of the people who are in tune with what's happening in the industry for the last 15 years know that Bitcoin is here to stay. Mm. Um, and, but if you, once you start to move away from Bitcoin and go down the list. What about Ethereum, Solana? I think Ethereum is fine. Uh, maybe uh, also to a less extent, but also Solana is okay. getting there. But once you start to drop start off from that, yeah, okay. then uh, you start to, you have to ask a lot of questions, mm -hmm. I think. That's the first thing. The second thing is uh, the management's execution capability. Mm -hmm. So this, requi this operation requires uh, ability to navigate the public capital market mm -hmm. uh, and a structured, like uh, the right uh, instruments uh, for, for what, the, uh, what these institutional investors are demanding. And that's not an easy task. Uh, it requires somebody who has a lot of experience, mm -hmm. uh, or a, a lot of understanding of how capital market works, and a lot yeah. of experience in dealing with the, these institutions. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if there's, like the last time I counted, there's 27 deaths listed in the US. Mm -hmm. If you talk about globally, it's even more. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if, if all of them have these capabilities at the moment, so uh, uh, you're, you're bound to watch out for these kind of, uh, I think, uh, the critical signals, I think.